Hello friends, welcome to video series on geography. In my previous video, I've explained about water cycle. In water cycle, we have three important stages. The first one is evaporation. And then we have condensation, which gives rise to clouds. And the last stage is precipitation, which results in rainfall, snowfall, etc. So in my previous video, I've explained in detail about evaporation and condensation. I've also explained about concepts like humidity, relative humidity, dew point, saturation point, and different forms of condensation like fog, mist, clouds, etc. in detail. So in today's video, we'll see about precipitation, the last stage of condensation. And before watching this video, you need to have a good understanding about concepts like latent heat of condensation and adiabatic lapse rate. Along with that, you need to know about condensation, etc. So first watch my videos on the respective topics before watching this video on precipitation. So in today's video, we'll see about different forms of precipitation. Along with that, we'll see the most important form that is rainfall in which we have different types. And we'll also see about thunderstorms, thunderstorms and tornadoes, which are part of rainfall. So what exactly is precipitation? We know that after evaporation, when water vapor reaches higher levels of troposphere, Due to fall in temperatures, that is due to adiabatic lapse rate or lapse rate, we have fall in temperatures and due to this cold atmosphere, the water droplets which are separated by particularly large distances come closer, that is they condense and they give rise to bigger droplets. And these bigger droplets grow in size due to successive condensations and once their, their weight overcomes the buoyant force offered by uplift, up, move, up moving air, they simply fall back to the ground in the form of precipitation. And again, this precipitation can occur in different forms like drizzle, rainfall, virage, snowfall, sleet and hail. So all these forms uh, have uh, different properties. So we'll see them in detail. So precipitation in particular happens both in liquid and solid form. For example, if precipitation happens below freezing point, it will give rise to solid form. And if it happens above freezing point, it it will give rise to liquid forms. So freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius. So it depends whether precipitation occurs below this temperature or above this temperature. So drizzle is nothing but precipitation or slight small rainfall in which the raindrop size is lesser than 0 0.5 millimeters. And when it comes to rainfall, in rainfall we have the size of the drop which is greater than 0 0.5 millimeters. So drizzle happens in a very light form. It doesn't have significant effect on the local weather whereas rainfall is quite significant as it pours a lot of water to the ground which is very essential. It can cause flooding as well as helping crops, growing crops. Coming to drizzle, drizzle occurs mostly in the regions where there is foggy climates for example in the Great Banks region near Canada where we have meeting of cold and warm waters near the Great Banks. And uh, the, the drizzle form of precipitation is very common. So drizzle is nothing but tiny drops which uh, fall to the ground at very low intensities. And virage is another form in which raindrops evaporate before reaching the earth's surface. And snowfall is nothing but rainfall where the temperature at which precipitation occurs is below freezing point. So instead of water droplets, we have exo hexagonal ice crystals which combine to form snowflakes and these fine flakes fall to the ground and this is called as snowfall and then we have sleet in which again when precipitation occurs usually if it occurs above freezing point freezing point it occurs in the form of water droplets or rain drops so when there is temperature inversion situation where we have warmer layers in the upper levels and colder layers in the bottom levels and when this water droplet is traveling in the cold layers, it freezes when this temperature is below freezing point. In such a case where it starts as raindrops and ends up as ice crystals, it is called as sleet. And we have hail. Hail is nothing but significant sized ice petals uh, the, which fall to the ground, especially during thunderstorms. So we'll study this in detail while studying about thunderstorms. So these are different forms of precipitation. And in this example, we can see this is hail formation where due to success, uh, successive upliftment of 
an ice crystal over a period of time gives rise to hail so we'll see in this uh, detail about hail in future slides and there are different types of precipitation and the first one is convectional type along with convectional type we have orographic rainfall frontal rainfall cyclonic rainfall etc so first we'll see about convectional rainfall so in my previous videos i've explained what convection is we have seen that for example in a boiling pot of water we have fire which is applied at the bottom so water at the bottom gets hot and when it becomes warmer its pressure falls and its pressure is comparatively lower than the upper layers and hence it moves upwards and the upper colder water which is at high pressure comparatively high pressure falls to the surface and this cycle repeats with the continuous application of heat and this is called as convection the same kind of phenomena is observed in the earth's atmosphere as well we know that in troposphere due to sun's insulation which is uh, greatly influences the temperature of land that is the temperature of land is quite significant compared to the upper levels of atmosphere we know that due to adiabatic lapse rate the temperature becomes cooler as we move upwards so when this particular air parcel at the ground is heated so it becomes hot its temp uh, pressure falls compared to the uh, surrounding uh, pressures as a result it is uplifted so when this is uplifted it reaches upper levels of troposphere where due to fall in temperature due to lapse rate there is condensation in this air, particular air parcel so when there is condensation there will be precipitation at a certain point so this is how convectional rainfall occurs the most important thing about convectional rainfall is it needs to have good supply of heat usually the sun is the chief source so in regions where there is significant amount of sunlight available like in the tropical regions the convectional type of rainfall becomes very significant so convectional rainfall occurs for a very short duration but it is it happens in the form of tor torrential rainfall torrential rainfall is nothing but rainfall in terms of bigger drops so drops will be of considerable size and rainfall will be very heavy but it occurs for only short duration and here it is very highly localized that is it is the clouds doesn't spread over a large large area as a result the rainfall occurs over a very short sp span of uh, very short regions and it is associated with minimum amount of cloudly cloudiness so we don't see a significant sized clouds like nimbostratus clouds in convectional rainfall the chief form of clouds are cumulonimbus clouds cumulonimbus clouds have a huge vertical extent for example they extend from bottom levels of troposphere till the upper levels of troposphere that is their vertical thickness can be about 10 to 15 kilometers based on whether it, it occurs in the tropical regions or temperate regions but in temperate regions usually the occurrence of uh, convectional rainfall is very low or the formation of cumulonimbus cloud clouds in the is in the form of frontal uh, precipitation and here the cloud formation is not highly significant as it is in the tropical regions because tropical regions have greater amount of sun's energy so their extent would be at the tropics about 14 to 15 kilometers so this vertical extent would be 14 to 15 kilometers so convectional rainfalls mainly occur during summer this is because of greater amount uh, amount of heat which is available during summers and it is common over equatorial doldrums regions so i've explained in detail about equatorial doldrums while explaining about permanent winds and pressure belts we have seen how upliftment of air causes thunderstorms in the in this region of doldrums where there is intertropical convergence zone so the chief uh, the main regions which fall under intertropical convergence zone are congo basin amazon basin all these are part of equatorial regions where we have equatorial rainforests and also there is huge supply of moisture from the surrounding oceans so all these things help in greater convectional rainfall the most important thing is intense heat from the sun along with that we have convectional rainfall which is very common in india but the most intense convectional rainfall occurs along the doldrums and very important concept under convectional rainfall is thunderstorms so thunderstorms is a convectional rainfall with lightning and thunder usually not all convectional rainfalls are associated with lightning and thunder and the rains which are particularly associated with lightning and thunder are called as thunderstorms so thunderstorm is a storm with thunder and lightning and typically also heavy rain or hail so 
it is characterized by torrential rainfall where the rainfall occurs for very short duration but occurs at a very high rate and we have most of the times hail formation again it depends on region to region for example in india the hail formation occurs in the months of june and may and also sometimes in aprils so hails are not uh, hails are very damaging cause a very damaging effect on crops we'll see we'll uh, have this in news during the months of mainly april may and june and most of the thunderstorms occur in southern states like karnataka and kerala in kerala these thunderstorms which occur in summer are called as blossom shower uh, sorry mango showers whereas the thunderstorms that occur in karnataka are called as blossom showers so so these two terms are very important in kerala we have mango showers and karnataka we have blossom showers b l o o s a m s h o w e r s and these are severe local storms so they are very violent and they create a very unstable weather conditions but they last for very short durations and most of these thunderstorms occur over continents this is because the continents get hot very quickly due to sun's insulation compared to oceans because continents have less than specific heat that is the amount of heat required to heat continents is very low and convectional or especially thunderstorms need very intense heat and this kind of intense heat is available on land because of both uh, sun energy as well as faster heating capacity of the ground and now we'll see let us see about formation of thunderstorms usually it occurs in three stages the first stage is called as a uh, formation stage where we have the building up of cumulonimbus cloud and in ma major stage the formation of cumulonimbus cloud is complete and here we see intense rainfall in the dissipation stage we don't see significant wind movement but we see good amount of rainfall and we can see the cloud dissipates and at after certain time the calm conditions prevail so we i've explained about how cumulonimbus cloud forms when there is intense local heating the air is uplifted when it is uplifted the moisture in this air condenses to form cumulonimbus cloud and when there is condensation there is latent heat of condensation which is being released and this heat supplies more energy to the uh, to the cloud formation and hence the air parcel moves upwards to a very great height for example we can see the height ranges from 3 to 12 kilometers above the ground so this leads to a huge cumulonimbus cloud the successive condensation and upliftment leads to a huge cumulonimbus cloud and the most important factor is the humidity if the air has less humidity then the cumulonimbus cloud formation will be very small so and also the dissipation takes place very quickly and if there is great amount of moisture then this cloud formation will be very huge and the atmosphere will be very violent in the mature stage we have usually an updraft updraft where we have the upliftment of air so this upliftment of air keeps on building up the cumulonimbus cloud whereas rainfall occurs along the region called as downdraft just below downdraft so what is downdraft we have seen that due to upliftment process there is accumulation of air in the upper layers and this air has to come down to the ground and this is high pressure zone so we have low pressure at the center and whereas high pressure at the upper layers because of accumulation of more and more air so this high pressure region allows the subsidence of air and this subsiding air is called as updraft and while it it is subsiding it carries lot of condensed water droplets which form precipitation in the form of rainfall so most of the rainfall occurs along downdraft whereas updraft is associated with intense upliftment of air and cloud formation coming to path of thunderstorms usually the path is very random or erratic so it doesn't you cannot simply say this is the direction of thunderstorm it keeps on changing but when you see about wind direction usually the winds are due to the downdraft situation so what happens just before the incoming of thunderstorms let us imagine that we have a house here and there is a huge thunderstorm which is building up somewhere in this region so we have updraft here due to updraft there is cloud forming and we have downdraft which leads to rainfall and this downdraft after causing the rainfall the winds move in this direction so when this thunderstorm is closing towards this house 
the first observation will be very violent winds which are coming from from this down draft so these winds first hit the house and after the winds we see the incoming of this part of the cloud so this part of the cloud touches the uh, the house and then we have good amount of rainfall in that region at this stage usually the winds are quite stable then violent and once this down draft stage is crossed we have dissipation stage so dissipation stage is where the humidity in the air is least and hence there will be no more building up of cloud and here we see the cloud dissipates in the form of complete rainfall so in the dissipation dissipation stage we don't have significant wind movement we only have good amount of rainfall and it lasts for only few minutes see the whole thunderstorm process usually lasts for only about 20 to 30 minutes or for max it would be about an hour beyond that it doesn't last so usually the mature the building stage will be few minutes and then we have intense rainfall for about 10 to 15 minutes and in the dissipation stage we have intense to moderate rainfall and this would last for about 10 to 15 minutes so in dissipation stage we don't have uh, wind movements or significant violent winds as we have in this uh, region that is down draft so it will be very calm condition and once that uh, the dissipation is over we'll see very stable conditions and again remember when the there is thunderstorm that is approaching we have winds that first hit the region and it is because of down draft where the winds subside and moves towards in the direction of the movement of thunderstorm so this is the three dimensional structure of view of thunderstorm if you take whole thunderstorm from top layers to the bot bottom layers we can see how it extends from about 2 to 14 kilometers in near the equators again this extent falls as we move towards uh, the higher latitudes and we can see this is the shape of the updraft so we have updraft which is building the cloud so the cloud formation is mainly due to updraft whereas the rain formation is due to downdraft and again coming to motion i've already explained so it is determined primarily by the interaction of its updraft and downdrafts we have seen how updrafts and downdrafts occur and this interaction creates the movement or the direction determines the direction of the thunderstorm it is usually very erratic and it is very hard to determine the direction of thunderstorm and the speed of isolated storms is about 20 kilometers per hour but some some storms have significant uh, velocities and in extreme circumstances when there is significant build up of thunderstorm then we have about 65 to 80 kilometers so this kind of condition is not very common in india but if you take regions like usa where there is <coughs> tornado alley etc in those regions usually thunderstorms touch speeds of 65 to 80 kilometers but in india we have these kind of thunderstorms where the speed doesn't go beyond 20 kilometers and again in thunderstorms there are different types the first one is connect convectional type what we have seen in the previous slides it is called as convectional type of thunderstorm so we can see this is the convectional type here we can see the cloud uh, clouds in thunderstorm are very smaller uh, cover very smaller regions but they have very good vertical extent and there is orographic thunderstorms and frontal thunderstorms so while explaining about fronts i've explained about cold front and we have seen how cold front give rise to cumulonimbus cloud so please watch the video on cold fronts to understand this how cumulonimbus cloud is formed we have we don't have cloud cumulonimbus cloud formation in warm front because warm front doesn't occur as violently as the cold front because in cold front the cold air moves very quickly as a result the warm air gets uplifted at a greater pace because of this huge gradient and hence there will be quick accumulation of moisture and it will give rise to cumulonimbus cloud as we have seen in the previous stage and when it comes to warm front usually warm front slides above cold front and the gradient is very low as a result it doesn't have, there is no quick upliftment of air warm air and hence here we see nimbostratus cloud which spreads over a large distance and it is it doesn't build up over vertical distances so you can understand more while studying about fronts i've already explained this in my previous videos and the other kind other kind of thunderstorm is orographic thunderstorm so in orographic thunderstorm we have winds which are flowing towards a sloping region and these winds might be blowing at very good speeds and they might be having good amount of moisture in them and when they touch this region or the sloping region they get uplifted because of the virtue of this slope 
and due to this upliftment as we have also we have seen about how upliftment leads to fall in temperature and fall in temperature gives rise to condensation and condensation gives rise to cloud formation so when this upliftment is very violent or very quick because of lot of pressure from the from the behind winds so this upliftment can be very quick and when this upliftment happens very quick it gives rise to cumulonimbus clouds and if the upliftment is not of considerable uh, intensity then it might give rise to nimbostratus clouds or other low intensity clouds so this is about different types of thunderstorms and coming to uh, based on whether it has a very huge cell or a small cell again there are different types for example we have isolated thunderstorms in which there is a single small cell and we have multiple cell thunderstorms we can see here a single uh, another new cell is being formed in this region so these kind of thunderstorms are very uncommon and they are very violent and we have supercell thunderstorms which are very common in the tornado alley of usa tornado alley a l l e y so this is region which sees intense tornado activity and most of the tornadoes are caused due to this kind of supercell thunderstorms we can see the convection cell is very very huge